بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكن من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا تشهد أحدكم أي في تشهد الأخير من كل صلاة فليستعد بالله من أربع يقول اللهم إني أعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا وممات ومن شد فتنة المسيح الدجال أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. My dearest respected brothers and sisters in Islam. It is from the immense mercy and the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we gather here today. My brothers, it is not my own will that I came here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this power, this tawfiq is given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people, they intended to come. But Allah accepted each one of you to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That way we also invite our guests to our houses. Similar way Allah is inviting each one of us to his house daily. How many times? Five times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling to his servant and telling them this is the time that you come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brother, in the best time, right? one of the best time to perform <coughs> salah, it is the salat al-subh, salat al-fajr. Right? Amongst the people upon whom the salat al-fajr was difficult, the munafiqun, those who believed in something but outwardly showed something else. For them to wake up from salat al-fajr was not easy. My brother, the Pathway to Jannah program is continuing. As you know, this is the third session that we're having. Uh, I have been given a topic which is, might not be that interesting, right? You might not like, especially early in the morning, right after Fajr, I'm not going to be able to entertain you that much. Half of you might be sleeping, so I might have to do things to keep you up. You might sometimes need to stretch out, you know, move around and wake up from your sleep. After Fajr session is the one of the toughest sessions, basically. Uh, this is the session that everyone wants to sleep. 
or everyone is waiting for breakfast. You know, empty stomach. People had meal long. Uh, actually, last night we had meal a little late, so everyone should be good to go. But everyone's waiting for this beautiful breakfast. I was checking the breakfast. There's so much breakfast. We don't have enough people here. But if you look at the amount of breakfast we have, subhanAllah. So we have breakfast. If you listen the talk, inshallah, we'll give you breakfast. <laughs> Even if you don't listen, inshallah, we'll give you. So inshallah, so we'll continue. So we're not going to take that long. It's not like my talk is not going to be like the shuyu for the scholar there giving talk. It's not going to be lengthy talk or uh, some have uh, talk have seriousness in it. We'll try to have some fun while we're having the talk. I know the topic doesn't tell us to have fun because this is something to be serious about, right? We're talking about fitna. And fitna is something which that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us regards to it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself tells us and different verses of the Quran regards to the fitna. How this fitna will come and will take us. And how this fitna can overtake people and make us such. Now in order to overcome the fitna, first we need to know what the fitna is. If I don't even know the fitna, how am I going to overcome the fitna? How am I going to save myself from the fitna? Right? The literal meaning of fitna that all of us, maybe some of us, we hear about the meaning fitan, right? Meaning trial, tribulation that we hear, right? And also can have the many mushtarak meaning. Many meaning can be given. We can give it to it. Right? Fitna can be punishment. Even right? it can be punishment. Sometimes fitna can be good for us right? based on how you take that fitna. With that fitna, you can be such that you can guide people towards Allah. With that fitna, you can be such that your children are guidance, getting guidance. While there will be fitna that your children will take you to Jahannam. That will also be fitna. Your wealth will be fitna. Right? Our wealth that Allah has given to us, the mal that He has given to us. That's what the verse that will be cited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in Surah al -Mulam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, at the end of Surah to Munafiqun, and He said, Ya ayyuhal ladina amma, O you who believe, He is addressing the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, if you look at it, He talks about, Ya ayyuhal Muslim. He talks about different, different people. And He talks about a kafir. He talks about disbelievers. Ya Yuhan Nas, he talks about human being in general, but then he looks at each one of us and he says, Oh the true believers. Oh the true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Last night the topic was how to be a true believer. Be a true believer. That was the topic Shaykh discussed last night. So Allah is addressing each one of us. Allah is addressing each one of us. Whether we're male or females, Allah is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladina amin. O you who believe, la tulhikum. Do not destroy yourself. La tulhikum hu amwalukum. Do not let your wealth destroy yourself. Don't be such that the wealth that Allah has given to you that making you go away from Allah. Right? In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it mentioned that Bani Adam, they say, Mali, 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 this is my world, this is my world. And this world that I have is everything for me. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, no, this is not your world that you have. What is your world? You think that gathering of the world that you're doing, that's your world? No, that's not your world. Your wealth is that, that which you used in yourself. That which you, you spend on, that is your wealth. That is your clothes away, that is your wealth. But if you haven't done that, then your wealth is just getting wasted, just staying as it is. We did not use it that well. And all of us were running towards that wealth. The destruction upon those people always gathering wealth. Always and gathering the world and forgetting the real life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved for each one of them. 
So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, لا كلكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم. Do not let your wealth and your children destroy you. Here means divert you from the members of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That you shouldn't be such. Then you are not remembering Allah because of them. That shouldn't be the case. And if you do so, wa man yafan dhalik, that when your children comes and you want to make decision between you and between your children and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, what are you giving priority to? What are you looking at first? Are you looking at the Deen of Allah first, or are you looking at something else? Are you looking at something else? If you are looking at the Deen of Allah. And obviously, you're not from those people who are in, in, in fitna. But if you are looking at from the uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if you're not looking at from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, rather looking at from children perspective, and you are giving preference to them without giving preference to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then you have been in trial. You have been given the trial and fitna. Similar manner, our our wealth is trial for us. If that wealth we're not using to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but if that wealth is such like we're spending in the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, like the Sahaba of Allah Anhu, they have done it. Allah gave them so much. We know the example of the Hada. We know the example. So many Sahaba at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that He has given. Allah has given to them so much. But what did they do? When it comes to the taqad and the Deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they were the first one to give in the way of Allah Subhanahu. Then we're not going to be among those people. Fa'ulai kahum al-fasi. Not going to be among those people who are the losers. Allah is calling out to us. He is telling that those who don't remember Allah, they're the losers. That they forgetting about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by remembering their wealth, by remembering their uh, children, and forgetting about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, my brothers. We want to start and say the example that is given to us in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says in a hadith that fitna will come in different ways. The fitna will overcome and will take people in different ways. Now, how can we protect ourselves from that fitna? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said this hadith in Nabi Abu Huraira radhiyallahu taala anhu he says badiru bil amal badiru bil amal fitna ka qat'a al-layl al-muslim that hasten be prompt in doing good deeds Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that hasten to do good deeds right once we leave from this world then it will be too late to do good deeds وَلَنْ يُؤَخْرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاجَلُهُ When you call will be called, but the angel of death will come, then it will be too late to do amal. You cannot do amal. You cannot rectify yourself. There is no way to rectify by that. That is, this is the time that you have that you could use it to rectify yourself. This is the time you have that you could use it to do amal, to do deeds. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Be prompt in doing good deeds before you are overtaken by turbulences, before you are overtaken by the fitna, which would be like the part of the dark night." And what is that fitna that is doing to you, to us? That yusbihu rajul mu'minan. That the person he spent his morning as a mu'min, as a believer. Spend his morning as a believer. But how is it possible that his evening, his night, is spending as a kafir, as a disbeliever? And then Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wayumsi mu'minan," that he spend the night as a believer. Wayusbihu kafir, but he spend the day, night, the day, and the morning as a kafir, as a disbeliever. Now, how is that happening? That what is he doing with his deen, with the deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Yabiru dinahu. That he is selling the deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He is selling his deen bi arudim min al dunya. 
with the commodity of this dunya. He gives reference to what? The worldly life. What is this worldly life? It's full of deception. That is the worldly life. So Prophet Sallallahu is referring to the zamana, is referring to the people, telling us this is ought to happen. This is going to happen. And we see the ulama is written under this. This doesn't literally mean people will become kafir. But their deeds will be such. The deeds will be such that they will be engrossed in sin so much. In decency, in fawahish, at night. So they're spending their night as a kafir. Means they're not obeying, not remembering the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That moment for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Man taraka salah muta'amidan faqad kafa. Right? We know this hadith. That person who lives salah intentionally, he lives as he lives this time, he becomes kafir. What does that mean? That person becomes kafir. That people, they forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This doesn't literally, ulama doesn't say this, literally doesn't mean he becomes kafir. Rather, what it means, he's doing the acts of kufr, that he's forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. What is the purpose behind his creation? He has forgotten that. So that's what it means that the person, he forget for that moment that Allah is watching him. For that moment, he forgets. That the Lord of the universe knows what you are doing. And he changes. He becomes kafir. And then morning comes. He again believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he fixes himself. Again the afternoon comes. Similar manner he becomes kafir again. Then again the night comes. And the morning comes. He becomes a believer again. And this is how people they do. This is how the fitna can take people. When the fitna engrossed you. When the trials and goes to you. When the different, different way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people. The easy way to understand from that is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brother, one of the biggest fitna. Eh? We can talk about fitna, different angles, different ways. One of the biggest fitna, hubbud dunya. What is the biggest fitna? The hubbud dunya, the love of this dunya. The amount of love that we have for this dunya, it is one of the biggest fitna. In the hadith, one of the hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that the fitna of having love for this dunya and karahiyyatul maut that people don't have, they dislike to have uh, meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says that person who is happy to meet Allah, Allah is happy to meet that person. So are we in the condition, in a place where I can say that I'm happy to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can we say that? My amal, does my amal reflect to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or my amal, my deeds telling me that I'm not ready to meet, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If that's the case, then I have been put in trial, I have been put in fitna. I have to understand myself and fix myself before it becomes too late. So love of this dunya. The example can, we can give from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once this hadith is narrated in Tirbin, Ali radiallahu anhu, he narrates this. He says that once we're sitting in the masjid of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see a person enter in that masjid. And this person that we see, his clothes were not looking that great. Worn out clothes that he was wearing. And he had a patch on his body, on his clothes. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he looked at that person and he started to cry. He's weeping. Look at that person. And then he says, this is the person whom Allah blessed him with everything. Allah blessed him so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him in his lifetime. And he was such, he was the most richest of all. 
He was such that he had the best of the clothes, but today he's wearing patch clothes. He was such that he had the best of the fragrance of Medina. He was the best of the fragrance of that time in Mecca. But today he entered with a patched clothes. He's entered with such a clothes that we don't want to wear that clothes. So the Prophet ﷺ, he cried and he was weeping after seeing this. And then Prophet Sallallahu he says, there will time, there will come a time when my ummah will have the best of the clothes, they'll have the best of the houses. They'll have their houses and the masajid built and they will be like, they will have the clothes, like the clothes of the Kaaba. That's how much the money that they're going to have. You know, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they say, they reply to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the Prophet of Allah, if that's the situation, then the people will be such, they'll remember Allah the most, right? When you're in luxury, what is the Sahaba understood that if you're in luxury, in good time, you should remember Allah more. Prophet Sallallahu he said, no. That time will come, they will have everything, but they will be very far from being of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not going to remember Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll be put into trials and tribulations in fitna. They're not going to remember Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this person that we're referring to is none other than Mus'ab bin Umayyad radiallahu ta'ala. Mus'ab bin Umayyad, the sacrifice that he has done, what he has given, what he did he not take from his life. Allah has given him everything, but he has taken out the love of dunya from him. When he was in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took out the love of this dunya. He did not give the love of this dunya. And he became Muslim and he gave up everything in his life to stand as a Muslim. What are we doing as a Muslim? The example of Musa bin Umayyad is the biggest example for each one of us. That I need to reflect myself. I need to check on myself that am I becoming like Musa bin Umayyad? Am I the person that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is crying for? Nabi of Allah is crying for that person. So much so, when he passed away in his janazah, in his janazah, he didn't have proper clothes, the shroud he was going to put. It is mentioned in the hadith that whenever Sahaba tried to cover the face of Musa bin Umayr, the feet would get exposed. If they covered the feet, his face would get exposed. So, subhanAllah, this was Musa bin Umayyad, that his example, he was not such that he didn't have love for this dunya. He took out, he, he took out himself from the love and the luxury of this dunya. And one of the biggest problems that we have, that we put ourselves in the luxury of this dunya, we put ourselves in the love of this dunya, and forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the purpose that he has created us. That's why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith that if there will be time come, there will be trials and tribulation, and this fitan will be such imtihanat or ikhtibarat, you will be tested. Yeah, you will be amongst those who will be tested. You will have test of your iman. You will have a test of your iman. That is time to time your iman will be tested. How you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you will be such. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al khayrun min al -qa'im. That person who sit, who sit from that time, he's better than that person who's standing. Uh, the fitna will not overtake that person. Wal qa'im fiha khayrun min al -mashi. And that person who stand will be better than the person who's walking. And then he said, Wal mashi fiha khayrun min al -sa'i. And that person who's walking will be better than the person who's running. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever will expose himself to these afflictions, these problems, they will get destroyed. So if you see these problems and the calamity comes and you expose yourself to this fitna, you most likely get destroyed. So whoever can find, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever can find a place of protection, 
he should go to that place of protection and take refuge in that protection and should take shelter in it. Uh, should take shelter in it. So my brother, the fitna is coming. What we are saying at this moment is nothing compared to what is going to come. What is going to come. When that time comes, what do you have to do? You have to secure yourself. You cannot be amongst the people. That fitna will take you away from the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be such that will cause more problem and chaos in the society. It will cause more problems. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that fitna is worse than killing. In the Quran, it says fitna is worse than killing. Well, fitna to ashaddu min al The fitna that will take and the humankind, and that will take the believer and will make him non-Muslim. That will make him forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why again and again, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us way to protect ourselves from fitna. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives glad tidings to that person who protects himself from fitna. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, Inna sa'id man junnibal fitan. Who is Sa'id? Who is the most fortunate person? He said the most fortunate person is that person who kept himself away from fitna. Who kept himself away from fitna. He did not put himself in a fitna. And then he said this three times. Inna Sa'id alaman junni man fitna. That Sa'id is that person who kept himself away from fitna. He did not put himself in fitna. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, if you are tested. If you are put into trial, Laman Uptulia, that person who has been trialed and he has been put into a trial, what he should do at that moment for Sabah. He should be patient. What he needs to be? He needs to be patient. What is the fitna? The fitna of COVID-19. What happened? When the COVID-19 came, that is one of the greatest fitna for each one of us. The people came close to Allah, some people they went far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the fitna. Some people they start to come to Masjid more, start to get in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more by remembering this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This can be rahmah as a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or this can be punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you take it is up to you. So those who take this fitna and remember Allah, they are such they are still connected to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are still coming to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who did not do this for them, this becomes as a punishment. It becomes as a punishment. They are blaming nothing but themselves. Who, them, who they should blame themselves because they are not such, not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that when the fitna comes, when the trial will come, a different, different fitna will come in our time, what do you have to be? You have to be patient. You have to do sabr in your life. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will be happy with you. He will become, he will be such that he will give you more and more. And what can we say in regards to that person who has been trialed, but he, he was patient? That this person is a very lucky person that he remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how to overcome? How, what is the way to save ourselves? Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith that we recited. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us in a hadith that every single salah that you pray, every single salah that you are praying, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commands us to seek protection from few things. He says, tells us to seek protection from few things. He says that when you finish your last akhirah, when you finish your last sitting in your salah, you should seek refuge in four things. Seek refuge in four things. And then he says, that seek protection from four things. And then he recited the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adabi You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the punishment of the grave. The punishment of the grave is also one of the fitna that we have. 
So we have to seek protection from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regards to the punishment of the grave. وَمِنْ عَذَابِ جَهَنَّمْ And then the punishment of the hellfire that is one of the greatest fitna. These fitnas are nothing compared to the fitna of hellfire. And that fitna will be such, will decide with the people of the right or the people of the left. That will be such. And whoever protected himself from that fitna, he has certainly attained successful life. That person who protected himself from the fire of Jahannam, فَقَدْ فَاسْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, certainly this person has attained successful life. That he is a successful person. That we can definitely say he is successful. He did not enter fire of Jahannam. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he makes, he used to make dua, وَمِنْ فِتَّةِ الْمَحْيَا وَمَمَانِ Allah Protect me from the fitna of mahya, oh my man. The fitna of my living the way I live. Right? The life that Allah has given to you is how you look at it. It can be fitna. And this fitna can overtake you and can do so much to you. Similar manner, our death. That when the angel of death comes, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't remember Allah at that moment, will be tested again. So many people, they entire life, they remembered Allah. But at their ending, they were trialed and they were tested. And they left without Iman. They couldn't say, La ilaha illallah. That person whose last words is going to be, La ilaha illallah, he will enter Jannah. Prophet said, the Nabi Sallallahu he said this. So our ending it also matters. When we're tested with life hereafter, are we ready to accept that test? And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again warned us to make this dua, wa min shabdi fitnatil masih That you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to protect you, one of the greatest fitna is going to come. That is the fitna of Dajjal. That's why Prophet Sallallahu told us to recite Surah Al-Kahf. He said, Surah Al-Kahf, to protect yourself from the fitna of the Jahan. Memorize first ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf. <coughs> Memorize the last ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf to protect yourself from the fitna of the Jahan. <coughs> that is a protection Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving to each one of us. And he's telling us to take this protection. My brother, the fitna that we were talking previously, the fitna of this dunya. What can this fitna of this dunya do to us? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith regards to the fitna of this dunya. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَوْ كَانَتِ dunya, Where this dunya were given to anyone. لَوْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعْدِلُ عِنَّ اللَّهِ جَلَاعَ لَعُوبَتِ The fitna of this dunya is talking about it. Were this world worth a wing of a mosquito? Yeah. If we say this world has some value, if you give some value to this world and say there is something to it, like all of us would think this world is everything for us. So Prophet said, if this world were to be such that it has value equal to the wing of a mosquito. And then he says, مَا سَكَا كَافِرًا مِنْهَا شَرْبَةً مَعْدِينَ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If that was the value of this world, then I would not have been given, I would never give this world to the kafir, I would never give them a sip of water to them, those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we see in this world? الدُّنِيَا سِجْنُ الْمُؤْمِنُ وَجَنَّةُ الْكَافِرُ what do we see? For the dunya, this dunya, for the believers, it is like a sigil, it is like a prison. For the kafir, those who disbelieved in Allah, wa jannatul kafir, for them, life of enjoyment. That's why this dunya have no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we fall in the love of this dunya. But there is no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this dunya. No value to this dunya. So remember, 
that the real life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved for each one of us, the life of hereafter. Again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's giving a curse to this dunya. What is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, Ala inna dunya madruna. That he said, beware that this dunya, it is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is cursed. Mal'oonun ma fiha, and whatever is in it also has been cursed. Illa dhikrallah. Accept those people, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Accept you from those category that you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ma wa lahu. When you such that you're among those people who are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're among those people who are sitting in the gathering, the dhikr, that you see this kind of gathering, and you go to this kind of gathering. وَعَالِمًا وَمُتَعَلِّمًا Or you become amongst the scholar. You become alim yourself. Or you become the student of knowledge. Then you have been given glad tidings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or else, this dunya is a curse for you. This dunya is mal'oon by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how will you look at it? Another hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that, Wallahi, ma dunya, if they buy Allah, if this dunya, if we compare this dunya with Afira, with anything, مثل ما يجعل أحدكم إسبعه هاتي. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, he put the finger inside the ocean, and inside the ocean, the river, and then he showed the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم, you see the leftover, the water that's drop is remaining, that is the compared to the ocean water, that is after. So this dunya is not for the believers. Believers have been given this dunya to make their after, so they can make after. That is the life. We're not saying that you abandon the dunya, but we're saying when you lived in this dunya, when you're living in this dunya, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make your life amongst the people of Sahaba, Amongst Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then will be given the glad tidings like the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the glad tidings to Sahaba radiallahu anhu. What Sahaba radiallahu anhu used to say, that we were nothing with the worst of the worst, with the most disgraceful people. When the deen of Allah came and we accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have been given the best of the best. We became the most honorable of the Umar used to say that they became the best because why? They accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were such they did not fall into the trap of this dunya. They were such they didn't have love for this dunya, rather, they stayed away from this dunya and they connected themselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll end here with one of the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, Regards to this dunya, again, he says, Inna dunya This dunya that we have, it is very sweet and lush. It's beautiful that you feel so much for this dunya. Khadira, right? green and lush. And there is a sweetness of this dunya. Those who fall into the sweetness of this dunya, they will forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa inna Allah mustaqlifukum. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you vice during in this dunya. You're the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are such that you should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should carry out the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving da'wah to others. Don't you look? Why don't you look at yourself what you are doing in this dunya? What are we doing? Are you remembering Allah? Are you going away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then he said, Fattakul dunya. Beware of this dunya. Beware of the temptation of this dunya. And then he said, وَاتَّقُوا nisa Beware of women's, the temptation of their fitna that Allah has put in them. So very important, my brothers, that we have to protect ourselves from this fitna. We have to protect ourselves as much as we can. And the best way that we mention is to recite the dua. Daily, we should be reciting the dua. Morning and evening. Any time that we should be reciting, we should be reciting in our salah, we should be reciting outside of our salah, we should be reciting anywhere we're in and recite that dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the fitna.
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to understand. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify our life in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect each one of us from the fitna of this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect ourselves from the fitna of anything that we see around us. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallah bihamdi, shadu ala astagfiru wa atubu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.